It is the Two Guys Garage Podcast. He is Kevin Bird and I am Willie B. And today, oh man, fired up. We got one of our buddies, our friends, and this guy is a straight knock you to face throttle jockey. Like when you think like miles per hour, hip hop hooray, getting crazy in the desert, asphalt, concrete, quarter mile, road course, autocross, time attack, it doesn't matter. This guy lives it, eats it, breathes it, loves it. His name is Dave Smith. Check out Factory 5 Racing. Straight stud, y'all. He makes crazy cool horsepower, absolute fun. And I got to tell you, Kevin, you know firsthand, he, this guy creates, uh, Dana White recently said he creates holy moments. This is what our boy Dave Smith does before the automotive industry. Oh, absolutely. Uh, we've known Dave for, what, 15 years or more? One of the best car guys out there, whether you're around a car or grabbing a cold one. Uh, you know, he knows, how yeah, to, he knows how to build. He knows how to drive. He knows how to have a great time. Uh, and most importantly for everybody listening, he knows how to create some of the coolest, like you said, uh, you know, beep moments uh, or products out there. And so it's all about build your own. We're, we're gonna be building our own in this podcast today, uh, Hot Rods. Now he's been in that hot rod game for a long time. Everything yeah, from the Cobra Roadster to, you know, the uh, Daytona Coupe, the 33 yeah, Ford. I mean, there's an endless lineup. He just keeps rolling out different product segments. Uh, but today we're gonna flip the script because we're gonna go from asphalt and tarmac to the dirt. Uh, Dave has once again changed the game on build your owns, and we're talking pre-runner trucks. Well, yeah, pre-runner man, trucks, which is just absurd. But think about the think about the what this guy has done. Because there was a time when if you thought kit car, you thought kind of like second tier, right? But but Dave with factory five racing, like if if you go and check out these cars, man, you're seeing legit high performance race cars you're seeing badass hot rods dave you know this you guys come with some unbelievable reputation unbelievable performance stuff that's tried true and tested yeah we do I'm, I'm glad to be here i mean i love you guys and we've worked well together for a long time and you know, you've got to know us as we've grown and you know you mentioned that experience and you know everybody thinks that we sell these you know beautiful cars and i always say to people you know yeah, you get a great car, but that's the least thing that you're going to get because our commodity True. here is, is your skill in building. A guy comes in with a roll of money. It's like, nah, cars aren't for sale, man. You got to build it yourself. And that's <laughs> that's kind of the, the, the price for admission. That's our tuition. And what happens, you, know, you think that's a disadvantage. Like, oh, a guy's got to build his own car. It's a lot, a lot of work. It actually is the best thing in the world because what you get out of that build is yeah, you get, yeah. you know, a father-son experience. You get to build a family heirloom. You get stories that you'd never have if you did just went out and bought a right. car and uh so I'm, I'm in a lucky position where I'm, I'm running a really cool car company we're a parts engineering company we're building people's memories we're building family heirlooms we're building people's careers and building value and performance for sure but uh it's a pretty fun gig and i'd like to keep it for a few more you know decades <laughs> yeah man yeah no doubt yeah, well, like no you doubt. said the experience isn't just one-handed you write a check you drive a cool car right you, you write a check and you drive a cool car. It doesn't matter if you pull up to the gas pump or in a crowd of, of car dudes and somebody says, wow, that's a great car, man. Did you build that? And there's that pause like, uh, I wrote a check, you know? <laughs> but when you build something, I mean, the street cred, the, um, you know, the pride of, of build and ownership that you have is, is a hundred times more. And it's like you said, the memories don't start when you purchase the ride and go for a drive. The memories start when you open up that first box, yeah. right? When you're thinking yeah. about all the color combos and how you're going to build it and what engine and what combination and all that stuff. That's where the memories start. And the build along the way is just, to me, as memorable and as and important, maybe even more than the actual car itself. Well, yeah, it's absolutely more when you think about it. Now, it we don't mean that, you know, bash on the people that, you know, just write checks and go go buy a hot rod, more power to you. But there is something said about building it, get your hands dirty. Think about the bond. Think about connection, not just with the other guys in the school or other guys with you building it, but the community. You know how uh, just the automotive enthusiast community is. 
They're very welcoming, very awesome. Uh, they collaborate. They'll help you out. That's what his schools are all about. Think about the memories that a father and a son can make, a, 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 a couple of brothers, a brother and sister. I mean, there's some really cool ways to connect. What about a husband and wife? I mean, exactly. they've got yeah. really unlimited stories. Uh, and what you make is just experience of a lifetime. And now he's taking all of that that he's learned and we're going to apply it towards something different. We're talking yeah. dirt. We're leaving we're the asphalt. Straight, getting we're down, leaving baby. the tarmac. We're going to the dirt. So you guys stick around. We're going to talk about this totally new adventure uh, that Dave is on. I've been in the truck. It is awesome. Uh, and we're going to dive right in it. Dirt Naps are us coming back on the Two Guys Garage podcast. He's Kevin Bird. I'm Willie B. We'll see you after the break. It is Two Guys Garage podcast. He is Kevin Bird. I am Willie B. We have our boy Dave of Factory 5 on with us today. He's straight rock star in it, man. This guy, he is absolutely living a dream, dude. What a fun career path you cut out, man. You really make, oh, wow, holy moments uh, for Every car enthusiast, every, you know, everybody looking for experience and a crazy ride at the end of it. Oh, it's, a, it's a good job. I want to try to keep it, but uh, <laughs> we're going down uncharted roads here. We got a, a new product that is taking us down a whole new development path, whole new learning curve, and pretty excited about it. But before you get into that, hold on, before you get into that, can, can you tell, you really transformed, you know, a, a kit car sometimes viewed as something that maybe, you know, second tier to what you, what you, you're going to find for the factory but you have really taken a different approach i just want to touch on that if you've never seen a factory five car uh if you've never you know uh, walked around one or seen you know on their website I encourage you to jump on it you guys have taken that kit car and really you know blown that experience up to a whole new level well it wasn't it, you know it, it goes back to the early 90s um even before that i worked at view medical school and i learned cad and uh, I remember when my brother and I were thinking about doing this company, we, we were like, we've got to dedicate everything in CAD, laser cutting, CNC. And at the time, our competitors were laughing at us. You could plasma cut steel for, you know, 50 cents on the dollar. Laser cutting was like, you know, aerospace technology. Nobody was using it in the custom car industry. And our first cars were all laser cut tubing, plate steel. And uh, uh -huh. over time, that, that technology got commoditized. So all of a sudden, the things that were so expensive became really affordable, but not only were they affordable, but our cars are proper engineering because you're talking about real precise cutting. CNC stuff delivers tolerances that you could never get by hand. And it also delivers you kind of economies of scale that we were able to make more of a car that could be totally customized, but everything was really done accurately. So I think, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty modest, but I'm not modest when it comes to what we did in the component car, kit car, hot rod industry. We took it to a whole nother level and made it really a modern industry based on modern technology and, and the car's performance show. It's just a function of the technology underneath them. Amen. Dave, Amen. I'm gonna add to that because absolutely you guys have killed it on the manufacturing side. You have super high quality stuff. But as an engineer, the design, right? You guys have race cars under those sexy bodies. Absolutely. Right, you take any old car and it's 50, 60 year old technology. It's Junko. You can bolt some stuff on. You can make it better. You can put sure. a big motor in it. It'll never drive like one of your cars. You take the skin off of that thing. It's a full tube chassis, fully engineered, right? You've got some crazy suspension on some of these, uh, and they're all meant to be driven super hard and have miles of smiles. Dude, those cars and you put the beg you to drive them. It, it looks beg hot. you to drive them. Those yeah. cars. Oh, those cars. Drive, yeah, absolutely. absolutely sit a saddle of any of his cars and they just scream drive me uh Absolutely. yeah they're, they're, they're what do you call it an inspiring drive yeah man yeah it's, uh, i it's mean awesome. kevin you've been out and 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 you get along with jim and Jasper and engineering and these guys have grown up with us and we've got a great engineering department and i'm really proud of the the science behind it but we were a little bit ahead of the curve on kind of this resto mod kind of think about it we all want that classic shape and style yeah. and sound uh -huh. but i don't want an fe motor that overheats with a heavy clutch and I, I want modern technology underneath and when you get on the brakes you want a car to proper stop and, and to drive like a proper sport car and that's what we make and and so we've always had that fusion of technology and and real respect for classic design and classic lines and and that hybrid has made us you know fairly successful in our in our area so i i have a great job man i get to you know run a company the way I want to run it. And, um, 
and you guys have been out here and, and I'm real proud of the company. Most of hey. the people that work here and, and the technology that we're applying. So I'm, I'm pretty proud of the company, but it's scary because where I want to take the company <clears throat> is a real risk. And uh, yeah, it's, man, it's we're almost gonna... like a whole new learning curve all over again. All right, but before we get to that new risk, out of the cars that you previously built, if you had to drive only one car for the rest of your life, out of the Factory 5 lineup, what is what is Dave Smith choosing? Hands down, the car that we made for all the wrong reasons, the Daytona Coupe. Um, mm. That car is a race car. You know, my wife gets yeah. in and she says, oh, it smells like gas. Love I'm like, yeah, car. isn't it great? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah it's baby. It's a bare knuckle fighter. It's a, it's a, when, when we had made a few Cobras and, and, and some replicas and we made a little bit of money, my brother and I were kind of going back and forth about what car to build next. And when we were kids, we had a slot car set with a Cobra and a Daytona Coupe. And I'm like, let's oh, make the man. Daytona Coupe. They made six original ones. We figured we'd make six, maybe maybe 60 replicas. We made almost a 1,000 of them. And it's a great wow. car. It's a, it's a really great car. That's property. my favorite, too, man. I think That's it's one of the first two, yeah. We re-engineered it in 2017, 2018, and the Gen 3 has an all-new chassis. We really took the design to the next level. Uh, wind tunnel testing. We, we won a couple titles with NASA and amateur racing. We've got a Daytona Coupe right now in Trans Am Racing. So it's a good wow. car, good design. And it's sexy as hell. Yeah, oh, absolutely. It, was it Joey Logano's that was yep, in your yep. shop a while back? Yeah, I, I mean, it just right now. Yeah, it's it's you know, take take that whole resto mod idea. So take a Daytona Coupe and just put the right levels of kind of race car and a little bit of carbon and some stuff on it, and it just looks so badass. Yeah, it's yeah, so yeah, cool. That's, that's the car I drive out the driveway. Yeah. yeah, yeah, man. I'm really on that you. one. <laughs> All right. So, what happened, man? You're, you've been on asphalt and tarmac forever, as long as I've known you and beyond. Uh, and you've ripped it up. You know how to wheel. You, you know, we've go karted. You know, we've chased each other around your your <laughs> lot yeah, there. Like, and all of a sudden, now you're full into dirt. And you had this great idea, which as soon as you started to kind of plant some seeds in my head, I got it. It sprouted. Right. The sun came out, and I was like. Dude, I, I need to know how that something. idea came because obviously there's a hole in the market, but a hole in the market doesn't necessarily cause most men to jump. You know, right? There, there's got to well, be a, a pivot. This point, was a, a fulcrum leap. point. This was a big leap for, for sure. So, what was the fulcrum point? What was the point of no return uh, well, th that where you had to commit? Yeah, it was a couple of things. I mean, uh, I always tell customers, you know, they they say, "Oh, why don't you make this car? Why don't you make this car?" And there's cars that you make that are fun. But, you know, I don't have a bunch of shareholders and investors, you know, with their hands in my trousers telling me what to do. I get to kind of chart my own path. But part of that is, you know, I've got a great responsibility. We've been in business for 29 years. Next year is our 30th anniversary. So I got to run a, a, a proper business in addition to having fun and building fun cars. And I think kind of the mistake in our industry is, you know, someone has a lot of car skills or driving skills or building skills. You got to respect the business as well. And so you got to look at the business in the bottom line and say, hey, I have a responsibility to my customers to be here in 20 years, replacement parts and, and the like. So when I thought about the business, you know, um, you know, we had I said to Jim in engineering and Jim is, a, is one of the most talented, creative design engineers. And I said to him, I said, I don't want another build-it-yourself two-seater sports car. That's what we do. We've got the Daytona Coupe. We have a race version of the Coupe, the Cobra. We've got a 289 and a 427. We've got a race Cobra. We've got a hot rod, a hot rod truck, a 35 truck, different deluxe grills, full fenders. we got a GTM, and 818. We took out a production. we got an F9 we're working on. How many build-it-yourself two-seater sports cars can a company make? Okay, <laughs> great. Now, what can the company do going forward to grow the company and to challenge the company? Maybe we're getting a little fat and dumb. Maybe we're, we're pretty proud of our accomplishments, and maybe we should be a little more humble and look to the next horizon. And so, you know, I lived in Southern California. Every Friday night, everybody's heading out to the desert, right? And you look at the pre-runner market and the off-road truck market. And, glamis, baby, glamis. Oh, yeah, exactly. And, and going out to Mojave and going out past oh, yeah, the other side. And, you know, I, I looked at – I have a, a Ford Raptor, and it's a great truck. And, you know – I wanted something more than a Ford Raptor, and that's what Factory 5 does is we go to the extreme levels. You know, Maybe the OEMs can't follow us because we're two frame construction and all that. And I said, a, 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 a great CEO would say, what are the skills that your company has and can you leverage those skills in a new market? And so you know, I came up with this truck idea about 15 years ago and Jim and I just went head to head. He didn't want to do it and I wanted to do it. And in 2015, Ford came out with the all aluminum construction. That means there's no corrosion in these trucks. And so the idea was to use our chassis engineering 
and, and, and manufacturing skills in chassis and suspension, which we're good at, and leverage it into a build it yourself, you know, Raptor on steroids with rabies. Okay. A, basically Who would have thought build it yourself pre runner truck? Who would have thought you could outdo a Raptor? Right. Exactly. Like you look at that thing. Anybody that's driven one. Hey. Hey, I'm, I'm not hating it. It's a badass truck. But if you take one out of the glamorous, well, there's miles of yeah. r- roads with big, huge whoops and, and people that are jumping sand rails, you know, 50 feet. A Raptor is just a truck. It's just a pickup truck at that point. But if, if you're talking a pre-runner truck, this mobbing 70 miles, 80 miles an hour down there and just sucking up all these big, massive bumps, whoops, you know, hanging its ass out over trails, hucking over, you know, big sand dunes and whatnot. Now, that might, that's a contender. That's... That's something totally different. Well, that's than a, a Raptor. quarter million dollar ride, or well, more, right, right, right. So, okay, that's, that's the gap point. between a Raptor and a pre runner, right? There's exactly, and 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 I think that great businesses leverage their skills and they look for opportunities. And I think the opportunity, and by the way, I could be wrong. You know, the truck has not been a, a smashing success as of yet. I, I it, our sales are picking up, and and I'm pretty excited about it. But well, you just launched the thing. We, I mean, we give yourself a, a couple ago. of weeks. We sold, I think, about <laughs> twenty or twenty five of them, but. The thing is, nice. that if you look at the truck market, and I looked at it hard, and I studied it, and, and I looked at all the trucks that are at SEMA, the, the truck industry is massive. There's not a truck out there that doesn't put a lift kit on it, or a set of mm. wheels, or a roll uh-huh. bar, or light bar, or whatever. And so the truck customer is already a guy who is used to customizing, right? And and, and Jeep guys as well. My daughter drives a, a, a Jeep Wrangler, and it's all lifted, and it's got lights on it, and it's real cool. But you know, the, the customer who builds a factory five is a lot like the guy who has a truck and who modifies it. So when I looked at the truck market, you have the OEMs, standard F-150s, GMC Sierras, all the all the regular trucks. Then you've got the TRX, the, the TRX, the, toy, uh, the, the, the Dodge, and you've got the Raptor, and now the Raptor R, and you've got a pretty cool upper echelon of OEMs. And then there's this massive gap between 110 160 thousand dollar raptors and raptor r's and oem trucks and then where you pick up with a real pre-runner which is a quarter million dollar on a truck right and there's nothing in the middle and a lot of those pre-runners you can't put a license plate on so i'm like wait a minute there's a big gap in the market and and that's our target and if we mix in the build it yourself component now a guy can have a truck that maybe can outperform a raptor r and a trx and the best of the oems and maybe it comes within within striking distance of a, a full-on pre-runner, but a guy builds it in his garage, so now he can defray a lot of the cost of that, and he can have something he could never have before. That's the Factor 5 formula. So I'm, taking I'm, I'm skills in. and going off-road, that's the, that's the plan. Yeah, I'm 100 And what a formula. Honest. What a formula. So think about that, and we're going to get into all those details coming up next, but you have a chance to build something in your own garage, right, that's on the same level or close to a pre-runner. For most people, 99% of the, the people out there driving, you're never going to know the difference, <laughs> um, that can outperform these guys that spend massive, huge, huge money uh, to get in these uh, these other applications that you can outperform. And this is something you can hang your hat on because you touched it, you built it, you created it with you know the, the people you choose, the team you have. So how does that happen? Ooh, this is going to be good. Find out next. Factory 5, Two Guys Garage Podcast. Kevin Bird, Willie B. We'll see you after the break. It is the Two Guys Garage Podcast. He is Kevin Bird. I am Willie B. Dave Smith. Factory 5, race cars. You guys got to go find him online. You're not going to believe this leap he took. About a year ago. Well, it's actually a lot longer than a year. This has been in the process in the mind forever. But he finally put all the pieces together. He came up with the idea of what's known today as the XTF. Dave, the floor is yours. Start with the chassis. What, you know, how obviously, you know, so much in the world of suspension to outperform everything that's out there. Start just while well, you started knocking off the total Give us pole, the bro. specs, man. Yeah. Yeah, man. well, I mean, and, and Kevin, you came out and, um, you know, you, Will, you asked the right question. You start with the chassis because if you go to the top level echelon of the OEMs, they still have that Ford F-150 frame in the Raptor, right? And it's modified, you know, stronger suspension parts, really cool truck and everything. But if you wanted to get, you know, we were looking for 20 inches of suspension trouble, not 14, right? Um, I think we've got 16 (laughs) inches front and that's because of the four wheel drive, right? You can get more if you get rid of the four wheel drive up front. Yes. And then we've got 20 inches in the back. Um, 20 inches, bro. So we started with a chassis, full on tube chassis. It's probably twice, a little bit more than twice as strong as the F-150s about 100 pounds heavier, so 
not tremendously heavier. It's just that CAD and tubular steel engineering can do a lot more than a ladder frame. Um, so we built the chassis and, and you take the F-150 cab, which by the way, the F-150 cab comes along with everything that we suck at, right? Air conditioning, stereo, power seats with the lumbar stuff and all that. All that comes in the cab <laughs> with a VIN number and you take the running gear from that Ford. So it's got an F-150, right? They made a ton of them with the Coyote motor and we thought, all right, we got an F-150, it's got a V8 in it. It's got, uh, we're gonna replace the chassis, we're gonna use the cab. We're gonna give you all new front end carbon fiber fenders and hood and rear fenders, 90 inches wow. wide. So it's, you know, the rear end's 10 inches wider than an F-150. Um, it's a monster <laughs> truck, but Kevin drove it in. And when you start with a chassis and the suspension, now you're not modifying an OEM suspension. So you don't get that like, you know, the guys with the lifted Jeeps, they didn't change any of their, their suspension parts at 60 miles an hour. They're all puckered up. They're about to go into oh, the ditch, Oh, death right? wobble galore. Yeah, man. Yeah. Now, I told Kevin, go down the highway with a truck, drop, go 100 miles an hour. And the thing is planted and it's driving. And it's made to go high speed with huge suspension travel. And that's what we designed. So it's a build it yourself, full on pre-runner truck that runs between really the top of the OEMs and comes within striking distance of the uh, of a, of a full-on pre-runner that would be a Baja truck or a, a you know mint truck. Man. Yeah, dude, I, I have to say one of the most impressive things. First, you gotta guys just get on the web and check out Factory Five. Check out the XTF truck, right? Lots of pictures. You can see the frame, the suspension. It is all legit. Like when you see this frame, you're gonna like mind blow. It's not just a box tubing. It's this full like 3D ladder mm -hmm. frames. You look at that thing, you're like, oh damn, yes. And you can just set the body right on top of that sucker, right? That's and awesome, And you look man. at the size of the tubular control arms, in, in right? All those suspension it's, parts. It's 20 feet long. It's 800 pounds. It's like, you know, you need a winch and a crane to move it around. It's awesome. Yeah, but it's a hundred awesome. pounds heavier. whoop de doo That's amazing that you get all that strength in there. And then what are the OEs? They're locked into what they build in high volume. And anytime you, you buy a, a vehicle and you modify it, you're constrained by Right, where those suspension pickup points are and all that stuff, right? You can't change any of it. And Dave just said, hey, exactly. What are the things that we don't do as well as an OE? The fit and finish of the interior and all that stuff. Well, hey, we know how to make suspensions and chassis and let's yeah. just marry the two and it's brilliant. And like I said, the thing that impressed me most was when you think of a, a pre-runner like truck and you think of 20 inches of suspension, you're thinking this thing is gonna rock off road, but Oh my God, what a handful on the street. What a mushy body roll, right, hard to control right. Dude, during 37 so inches on the road. Right. Like he said, absolutely planted, daily driver. You cannot wow. do that in a lifted Jeep. Like you get in a lifted Jeep, yes, you can drive daily, but you're doing all the wobbles and the thing drives like crap. This thing drives awesome every so day on the street. And then you just take a wrong turn and you're off road. Okay, you know? then what'd you do with the suspension that's so different, so unique? Tell us a little bit about the suspension on this truck because it sounds to me that's not the recipe that most people have. You add a lot of height, a lot of suspension, a lot of travel. You tend to get mushy suspension, yeah. a lot of body roll. You get to follow those ruts and waves and, and pavement and those bumps in concrete. So what did you do different? Well, first of all, we had to learn different because, you know, Jim and Yesper Engineering are used to, you know, Colin Chapman, if you drop it and it falls, it's too heavy, right? In a race car, you want everything <laughs> strong, but really, really light. Weight is your enemy. Off-road, you don't care about weight. You care about strength. And so, you know, uh, one of our engineers uh, was uh, left Factory 5 and was hired by a partner company of ours, Local Motors, and he helped develop the Rally Fighter, which was an off-road, air-capable, mm -hmm. rally-type uh, car. The company went out of business, but the car they designed was pretty cool, and Colby came back. And Colby had a lot of hands-on Baja experience and brought his off-road experience for the last five years back to our company. Worked with Jim and Yesper in engineering. And so there was a lot of learning curves to getting, I mean, the control arms, whatever you made, it's not big enough. It's not heavy enough. It's not strong enough. This is a truck that's a 6,500 pound truck that's gonna come down from 10, 20 feet onto a suspension and keep going at 75 miles an hour. So, you know, strength and engineering was a total relearn, you know? <laughs> oh yeah. So we went through that's a lot sick, of versions man. of suspension. Right now, uh, we spent about a week out in Ocotillo, California with Fox Shocks. And Fox has been a great partner and oh, they helped nice. us develop the shocks for the truck. You know, you, what you don't realize is, is rebound on these trucks. This wheel's gotta get back on the dirt, right? And it's going through cycles that you could never really replicate out here in New England. So we had to go to the desert and uh, we learned a ton with Fox. Um, 
I don't think we broke anything. Uh, I think Jim, if he did anything, he overshot on the durability side because he was so insecure about designing an off-road truck and looking at what's on the market. So our suspension is our own geometry, and that's why it works well on the highway and off-road. But the shocks and the springs, that was all Fox shocks helping us. We really didn't know our way around you know, that market. And you don't realize, you know, you see a, 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 a pre-runner going over whoops and it's going through, you know, 60, 70, 80 cycles brrr, like that. And the, yeah, the shocks heat up and the, the durability on these things is impressive. So, you know, it's an all new market for us. And uh, I think everybody who's driven the truck, I think the best quote is Mike Kim, who is the development driver for uh, Fox. He drove the truck for almost a week and he said, he said, you know, where you guys ended up is just shy of a full on. Two hundred fifty, three hundred thousand dollars pre runner, but it's got license plates on it, and you could drive it every day. And that's another thing is all of our factory five cars. Yeah, you know, that's that. That's the weekend car. That's the Harley. That's the Garage Queen, right? And you take it out to car shows. And yeah, some guys have driven it every day, but most guys they're they're the trophy car with the truck. You could commute in it. You could drive it year round. There's nothing stopping it. The powder coating on it is a is a saline resistant, corrosion resistant powder coating. So it's made to be driven and driven every day. And like Kevin said, get off the pavement and, and go hit the two tracks and go. So it's it's a Man. it's exciting for us, but a lot of engineering and development has gone into it. Okay, t- tell me tell me about the power plant. So obviously the suspension, loving what I'm hearing about that, loving the the suspension numbers, the travel. Loving the geometry, the chassis. What do you got for a power plant? Well, the, the, the F-150s we're using um, are 2015 to 2020. Um, we had a customer use a 2021. There's some body changes. Um, we had to move the fuel tank. But when it comes to powertrains, you know, Ford had the EcoBoost 6, which is most of the F-150s were the EcoBoost. And then about 35% of them are the 5-liter Coyote. <laughs> so back in 95, when we launched the company, we leveraged the the cobra the build it yourself cobra we leveraged the the mustang aftermarket i mean back then you know the 50 that old 302 kind of got ford back into the the hot rod and performance market remember the ho and it came out oh yeah man detective pistons and the 225 horse motor well yeah we harnessed all that aftermarket well the same thing is the coyote now it's got a huge aftermarket right now the truck that we just built for joey logano we donated to his foundation he's going to get it a couple weeks that truck's got the stock five liter in it, but it's got an Edelbrock blower on it. And it's making about 650, 700 horsepower. So <laughs> now you got all the power, 37 yeah. inch tires. And we just, we just hitched our, our wagon to the Ford Performance aftermarket horse. It's already there. Well, it's like a marriage, right? It it's is, like when totally. two halves come together and they make a yeah. greater something, you know? Like <laughs> that's, that's exactly what little, you guys have a, done. A little is, unity candle there, Factory Five. <laughs> Well, yeah, because I right, think about yeah. think about a lot of people, right? Especially when you're thinking about your daily. Um, sure. Yeah, we can take out our hot rods and on a nice day, and you know maybe we're sweating because the air conditioning isn't quite working, and it's it's loud because the the seals aren't very good, all that stuff, right? We Wait. can tolerate it for X number of days, but there's a little bit of whew, you get back in your daily, and it's a nice ride. This is one of those that it's kind of that rare bird. Where you can have a daily with your all your interior, just like you think of your brand new truck, but it's got it's this different. testosterone set of cojones underneath of that sucker that can do, I mean, God knows what. You could go jump uh, this thing 40, 50 feet, man. You could jump well, your truck 40, 50 feet. Like, what? Oh yeah. Well, Kev, uh, Kevin and, and Willie, uh, one of our first customers, Eric Trevis, um, he built a, a truck and we brought it to SEMA. And... Um, and he, he has a factory five and he says, you know, his factory five Daytona coupe is his other car, you know, but his mm-hmm. truck, his factory five XTF is his car. It's his daily driver. And he goes, it's the first factory five that I could pull a factory five with. So he's pulling a factory five with a factory five and That's it awesome. underscores the usability of the truck. I mean, it's an OEM reliable F-150 on steroids. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah that's, that's and you could jump man. at fifty feet. That's what he could uh, huck it at seventy, baby. Whoosh! It has, well, you guys ever one, done that? A pre runner challenge. Ah, uh, I was just gonna ask what what was kind of one of the big challenges. So, so well, every us. every great thing has a challenge that comes to it, and you know how we talk about when you build something, you know, it's not easy to build a car. We try to make it as easy as possible, but it's a, it's a hard thing to do. And and there's nothing great that's that's easy if you really think about it. All the great things right, in your life right. you had to work for, you had to try, you had to really struggle, and that makes it valuable, right? Well, strength and struggle, baby. Strength well, and struggle. 
we put, we're a small company. We put a lot of engineering dollars and, and time into this truck. And what we discovered was we didn't just invent a new product. We invented a new product category. So if you think about like Can-Am Spider, that three-wheel tricycle backwards, right? Mm -hmm. They realized that, and I read a ton about new product development in new categories. And if you think about it, you know, the guy's riding a motorcycle. He's like, he's getting a little older and maybe he doesn't want to ride a tricycle. Honda's got a trike and Harley's got a trike. You're riding a tricycle for God's sakes, right? It's not good. Well, Can-Am said, hey, let's put those front wheels up front, make it look cool, some body work. They came out with an all new product category. Um, there's a whole bunch of examples of products that are new categories. No one right now is out there thinking, I'm going to build me one of those build yourself pre-runner trucks. It's an all new category. So we've got to have patience and really social media came to the rescue because now we can spread the word without having the marketing budget of say a Ford Motor Company. But the biggest challenge here is we invented not just a new product, but a new product category. And once people drive it and see it and realize it, the heads explode and say, I got to have it. But they don't even know they want it right now. Yeah, it, yeah. you know, Dave, when I saw you last time, I think in my head anyway, and I could be completely full of it, but to me, it's one of those products that when you're out crawling, when you're out on the, on the, on the desert and you're doing your thing and all of a sudden you turn around and some dude comes ripping by in that <laughs> truck, it's like an instant sell in my head, right? Like uh, WTF, uh, when you like, start to see the, those things yeah. populating all yeah. of the normal areas where everybody is, like it's going to be a head turner because what else is there like that? There isn't. You know, that's all, yeah. Nothing it's a out. standalone. It's badass. It checks every single box. The guy drives it straight out there, rips on it, and drives it home. Right? It does all the things you want. Um, yeah, I think just like you said, it's let the wildfire go. You know, there was, there was strike a guy the named match Russell and. McGuire. I don't. I don't know if you read a, a lot of business texts. The guy Russell McGuire talked about new product categories. And you know, first you define the, the category, and that's we're defining it right now. And then mm -hmm. the next step is you establish that you're the leader in that category. You got to own that category. So right now we don't have any competitors. I guarantee you, when people start to see our trucks winning races out in the field, when we see volume, people are gonna say, "Hey, that's a great idea. We're gonna do that too." So we don't have a lot of time to do um, a lot of work, and so I'm pushing the company pretty hard. But it's also exciting because oh yeah, there it is. Yeah, that's not Catilla. <laughs> that's uh, that's the Fox Shocks development testing. Yeah. That's yeah, awesome. that's the carbon body, right? That yeah, one has a carbon, carbon body, which is another. You know, I mean, even a, even a pre runner's got fiberglass panels because of our previous product. Yeah. Our four door, yeah. even. There you go. That's it. Yeah, I love you. That thing is so righteous. <laughs> yeah, it's such a sick ride. Yeah, so I they've mean, got they've got you've got glass front end and rear end, right? The whole sure. truck. So literally, the kit comes with everything to make this thing. So you got the chassis, suspension, everything minus what wheels and paint, right? Yeah, wheels and tires. You got to get your own um, paint. If you buy the carbon panels, you don't have to paint them. They're paint free. Exactly. I mean, they come clear coated and, and matte finished. They're beautiful. So and they look awesome. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, so that's it's, something to think about if you're if you're in the market for the truck, right? Do you get paint? Do you hide it all all that coolness, or do you get the carbon and just let it shine? You know, skip the yeah. whole paint process. All you need is the wheels. Well, that right? whole carbon stuff. Tires. The argument on the carbon is paint keeps getting more and more expensive. And one thing I know after 29 years of building yourself cars is paint work is one of the biggest challenges. So the carbon, we had to get to the point where our carbon was so good, you didn't have to paint it. And that's a real challenge. So we put a lot of money into the, into the uh, basically the processes that go into the truck. And so the carbon process is one we spent a lot of money. We've got the right partners on that. Nice. Um, you know, so I'm oh, thinking in my head, right? If I'm listening. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah anybody to... that's uh, listening here, you should probably check out our podcast on, on the web. You can see the visuals. Uh, we'll, we'll splice in some good, um, some videos in here and then go check out Factory 5's website. Uh, Cause it is, it is pretty stellar. I gotta say, yeah, I think you knocked this one out of the park, Dave. I'm hoping it's on my list right that. next to the Daytona coupe. <laughs> what a cool truck. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm on the lookout for one of those Ford trucks. I'll be contacting you soon. Cause who doesn't want yeah. one of those, please. Um, who doesn't want to check out our hey, wait, show? Wait, 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 hold on, man. Dave, you got to drop a price. What are these things going for? So think about a pre-runner oh, truck, yeah, yeah. $250,000. $250,000. This comes with everything to build what we've been talking about, minus tires and maybe paint, right? What are we talking about? 25 here? grand right now. 
And, 25 uh, grand. Yeah, and Jim has a really good R&D project that's going to be done in about six weeks that's a stage wow. one. So if a guy wants to build this truck, he can do it in stages. For 10 grand, we give him the panels and a lot of the suspension parts. And then stage two, after you've driven it for a year or two, he can buy the chassis and go to the whole hog. So yeah, it's 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 10 to 25 grand. That's a grand. steal. That's a pretty steal. Pretty good price point, yeah. Right? You're I competing think. with a $300,000 truck, pretty much. That's where right? the hard, That's where value engineering comes in. That's where it's really tough to do. Yeah, Man. just think about all the parts on, t pick, pick your Bronco, pick your Jeep, pick your whatever. Think about all the parts that you got to build up, right? Your axles, your everything's like all that stuff. Oh, and you're uh, crushing with yeah, where you're going to add up and what you're going to end up with. Oh, you'll be yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And the engineering on this is yeah. proper. So I think we got, Absolutely. I think we got it by the, by the tail. All right, man. Yeah. Or other parts that we can't say on this podcast. Uh, maybe, um, maybe the next one though. All right, man. You guys, uh, take care. Make sure you check out our show air weekends on the motor trend network. Check your local listings. It's also available on discovery plus and max. Thanks to our guest, Dave Smith, Factory 5. Check out the website. He's unbelievable stuff they're doing. Uh, thanks to our producer, Scoop, senior producer, Justin Carter, executive producer, Bob Ecker. He's Kevin Verde. I'm Willie B. And this is the Two Guys Garage podcast. Yeah, don't forget, we've got a website, twoguysgarage.com. We're everywhere on social, at Two Guys Garage. Now, this Two Guys Garage podcast, it's copyright 2024, Britain Productions Incorporated, all rights reserved. All right, cool we've stuff got to, you're doing, man. Yeah, we got to take this thing from uh, street driving to meet you out somewhere in the desert, Dave. I, I want to. Yeah, we got to go racing. Thing. Yeah, that's the next step. Ooh. Is we got a couple teams that we're working with, but yeah, oh, we got to go race. Nice. We got to win something. Like, we got we got to run. This Baja. team racing do, it. This yeah. team racing. I'll do a Baja race. Yeah. Uh huh. Well, we got down, that. We got, uh, yeah, we we got to race. We got to race. Oh, I have a feeling you good. like to race. I love oh, the race, yeah. bro. I love oh, the yeah. race. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of inspired. <laughs> Go figure. Awesome, All right, man. man. Love you, Dave, bro. You're the best. Hey, we're good? Yeah, yeah we're good. All we'll right, see you guys bro. on the next Two Guys Garage podcast. Take care. Hey, thank you. <laughs>